Yes, indeed. Good afternoon, morning, ladies and gentlemen, mothers, brothers, daughters, sons, brothers and sisters. This is the Apex Online Racing F1 2017 F2 Sprint Series of rounds 9 and 10 here at the Circuit of the Americas. My name is King Kodiak and I will be your commentator throughout this evening's race. Now, we are just getting underway. We were just waiting for a few more drivers to jump on board and we have got 14 of them, no less. So just got the uh, cannibal run. A lot of you uh, are requesting the uh, requesting the uh, cannibal run theme, which is uh, quite nice. That song is actually more famous than I am. So for those unfamiliar with this, how this series works, it is two 25% races uh, with a one-shot qualifying, decided the qualifying for the first round, and it's the uh, same grid, but the top eight are reversed for round number two. I am really, really looking forward to this. I love Circuit of the Americas. Uh, it's always a good fun to commentate at. So we are now heading down to the grid. Let's take that down. So let us head on then through the bits that we know of and head on down to the grid to see or head on down to the field now of course we will shoot straight into the one top qualifying so everyone's going to be oh it's raining oh that's going to upset people <laughs> oh that's going to be fun if that carries over into the race uh, into race one at least all right let's see who we're going to pick up then for the first or oh, for the qualifying run I was trying to tend. I tend to try and pick up ACR Timp as he currently leads our championship. If I uh, click on this one, uh, you'll see how the championship currently stands. Timp with a pretty commanding lead on 158, then Smeeds to a detainable three, Cosy four, Hayden five, and uh, well, exactly as you see it. But without further ado, let us head back down to the field. Then it was a very very. <laughs> seeing the swimming icons there and here we go then and it is indeed Tim that we have picked up straight away fabulous so oh, actually, is it Skatey or Tim? no it is Tim that is uh, picked up right let's stay on board then for ACR Tim oops I didn't mean to do that right so into turn one uphill braking zone very very tight very slippery as well they are on the inters so no uh, particular standing water at the moment long turn two now the S's takes you through all, all the way through from turns three through to ten. It's so easy to make a mistake here. This is all about patience. You can't really pass unless someone really throws it off the road. And uh, we've already lost uh, Rick Vega and uh, Temple of One, so uh, two people that have had a pretty poor qualifying already. So they'll be starting towards the back end now, heading on down to turn eleven. Next, very heavy braking zone. Oops, and uh, Tim just gets the tail a little bit happy on that one. Long straight. DRS open if available. Not available in the wet, of course. And then pick your breaking point for turn 12. We've lost Erskable as well. So uh, the wet weather catting a few people out. Now th through 12. Down to 13. Or well, the double right-hander, 13, 14. There it is. No real... Uh, it was essentially a double right hander there is ah, two apexes there and Tim's gone very wide through 15 but that actually gives him an interesting uh, line through 16 that could be out of choice it looked like he went very deep but that could be intentional now 17-18 again a long sweeping right hander that has two apexes through it then it's the left kink of 19 pit entrance on the oh and he's run a little bit wide that could be a little costly for Tim now final turn 20 Nails the throttle, slides the car out, and now we see the qualifying times come in. 147.9 by a tenth and a half over Detainable, so that's very, very close. And Salenk, uh, oh, Erskable was disqualified from the uh, session. That's not good. I thought he retired from the session, actually, so not quite sure uh, what's happened there. But there are your qualifying sessions. Look at that, a tenth and a half only separating Detainable and Tim. And then 1.3 down to Hayden, so the wet weather catching a lot of people now. Smeej 4, Skatey 5, Kanon 6, Cozzy 7, Defabe 8, Coldo 9, and Rienk rounding out the top 10. And need only 10, 10 times set. Rick Vigan and Temple 1 crashing out. And Sainik and Erskill will be disqualified from the qualifying session. And they will be starting from the back. 14 drivers present for this evening's races. And we will see then how this translate does the weather change
we know that it does indeed so we have got bright sunshine then for the race part of there's a little part of me this has gone boo <laughs> i wanted to see how these guys do in the wet but you can see how it caught several drivers out really before we followed tim through half of his uh, qualifying lap and the fact that there's 20 corners and so many of them are in really really short succession it's just you know one mistake is so so costly here um there's only really um two three major areas where you're going to really throw it on the inside of someone turns one eleven and maybe 12 uh where you're really going to get an overtaking maneuver but here we go then down to the grid five lights and rick vega's already got a jump start penalty that's not going to help him as does calder oh my goodness me we have got all sorts of of uh, trouble going on i'm not I'm, I wonder where they're going to restart the session because this is disqualifications and penalties going off everywhere tim hang it oh look at that that's hayden that's flown around the outside of disabled what a stunning start for him he's up to second position we've got trouble already rick vega is uh, retired he's uh, pulled off on the uh, on the infield there hayden's lost that uh, second place to detainable oh that's one of the renos getting very very wide i think that's temple one that uh, is getting a little bit squirrely in the back then Timp is just gone he's already built up nearly a second gap between himself and detainable now heading down to turn 11 and hayden now having to fight off skatey skatey having a look at the inside oh i've gone to the wrong person now skatey getting the inside of turn 12 uh, sorry turn 11 he didn't quite get the move done on board with the house can he do something now on the uh, slipstream heading down to 12 can he do anything about it he's, he's gonna have to throw it and hope and he doesn't do it now you can see he's on the super soft tires oh look at that that was smeeze that flew through on the inside of 12 doing what i thought that the house would do and the williams just dives through on the inside to take that fourth lovely maneuver let's actually get uh gap to leader but we also want uh our tire choices and look at that tim actually on the super soft he's running away with it and look at that that was skating and he's side by side with the mercedes of cosy he's falling through the field a little bit it's after such a great start oh skate has gone way off the road and that's going to allow the force india through. oh and that's the force india of the sanic i think that's coming in detainable taking the lead where did tim go tim's had a big problem somewhere he's lost the lead to detainable i would imagine it's the difference in the tires that's done it sanic it's going to the temple of one i think serving penalties as they come through rick vega is disqualified I'll be curious to know what's happened there and Tim having to slot in behind the ultra soft shots uh, Dara Rosso oh that gets very close again you saw the extra pace that Tim had couldn't use it through the S's detainable holding his line perfectly well now Hayden is uh, got Tim in his sights now and that just shows when these ultra softs are up to speed a circuit like here a circuit of the Americas it, that extra grip is absolutely crucial in these early stages it's how long that that extra grip hangs on for and i don't think it's going to hang on for long so we will see how the uh, how the field how the ultra soft runners hang on to the extra grip now as uh, that's hayden having a look at the inside of temper turn 12. oh goodness me that's uh, very very close hello there smash in the chat yes you should be able to join for race two um it's a shame you've missed uh, the start of race one contact coldo he should be able to help you out on that one and again hayden look at that the temp is falling away quite badly from the back of detainable it's not often what you see from tim actually it's, uh, on board with the mclaren i thought he ghosted for a second there look look at that he's outside of drs range of detainable and there's a real opportunity then for detainable to get on the top spot he's got the fastest lap of the race as you'd imagine it's all going to be down to tire life if those uh oh calder's actually in oh dear oh dear the other mclaren is running into the pits then is that a drive through or i think it's a drive through then for caldo that uh, must have been again all sorts of mishappenings going on in the start of this race that's uh, caused a few and oh no temple of one's got himself a three second penalty oh dear oh dear his race goes from disastrous to even worse so look at that then tim trying his best to stay within drs range of detainables not happening hayden is uh falling a little way back from the uh from tim then he's just outside of drs range but someone who isn't outside of drs range is smeege we saw that beautiful move from the williams he's got cotty all over his tail as well there is skatey we saw falling through the fiddle a little bit 
I've gained some places than losing places. Lovely four car train forming here. DRS open on uh, Smeej, Cozzy and Skatey. All off the back of Aiden. And that's a look on the inside by the Williams. Now, we'll say the lockups that we see on stream are not entirely accurate. Um, I've been informed by one of the drivers that uh, they don't lock up anywhere near as much as we see them. So whilst uh, out of pure instinct, I go, oh, they've locked up. They're not actually locking up anywhere near as much as we think they are. Now, Timp has started a real detainable in. I can see at the front. That gap now down to six tenths. And Hayden really is really has fallen into the clutches of Smeej. Have those Ultrasoft gone? Oh, Smeej! That's a very long way off at turn 19. Very easy to do. You carry a fair bit of speed through that double right-hander of 17-18 uh, as Tim gets the fastest lap. He's now finding his rhythm. Smeej feels the need to go defensive then from Cozzy. If we get an external shot, that would be nice. No, he does manage to find the apex, so Cozzy couldn't throw one up on the inside of turn one. Let's uh, jump to Timp then. He is broken away from Hayden. As you can see, nearly two seconds separate second and third. There is Hayden and his uh, train that he's driving along there. So now Tim back in DRS range of detainable. And Defabi gets himself a penalty as well. That is not going to help his course in uh, ninth position at the moment. That's what it looks like from the McLaren. As they now come through 10 11, heading down that long, long straight. He's too far back to really do much at the moment. But I would imagine those Ultrasofts are going to go off pretty soon. Look at this. This is Hayden holding up this particular train here. If Tim wins, this will. Who's going to. Are you offering to do a Shoei Smash or are you telling Dan to do one? Oh, look at that. That was Cozzy. Trying to throw it up on the inside of turn 13. Very, very brave. Smeed was very slow. And then look at that on the double right-hander of 13-14. So it was the inside of turn 12 that he tried to throw it earlier. And through goes the ultra soft shot Mercedes of Cozzy. Look how much tighter he's holding the apex than the Williams. He's, uh, there's still a fair amount of grip to be found on those ultra softs at the moment. Kalon gets himself a penalty. It's very easy to do because... Of, purely because of the amount of corners going on. Whoa, we just saw Cozzy fly off the road a little bit. Now Cozzy going to try and chase Hayden down. And look at that, just at the top of the hill, that is the view from Tib. He is really keeping the pressure on Detainable. He's got uh, his... He's certainly found his rhythm pretty well. Uh, the, not that I'm aware of there, Anthony. I don't believe there is a way of showing the tyre life. Uh, there is, I don't know. Is that colder in the pits again? That's the second time he's come through the pits in this race, and it's only a 14 now. As he's come in, he does not want to hang on to this ultra soft, so maybe we're going to start seeing... Oh, Cozzy, what a shame. He's got himself a three-second penalty there. And Coldo has vanished. Oh, no. It's just uh, he vanished from camera, and uh, he is actually back on track. There he is on the super soft tyres. Detainable. Keeping the lead then, but only four tenths now between himself and Timp. And Tim having a look on the inside of 12. But doesn't quite get the move done. Oh, trouble. It's Temple of One. We've lost someone. It's the Renault Temple of One. He's thrown it away in the S's somewhere. We can't really see where that is. Oh, goodness me. Our first crash of the night. And it is the Renault. And look at that. Just we come back to Temp. He's got the lead back from the table. Threw it on the inside. Oh, that is... If I can work out with another turn 15 and 16 that he's managed to get that move done. Very, very nice. It's detainable losing the best of those tyres already. No Timp's in. Well, well, well. I did not expect to see a super soft runner in yet. But Timp has decided to get rid of those tyres. Despite the fact that he is the quickest man on track. Just managed to dip into the lead. And predictably, Ultra Soft's going on the McLaren. He obviously feels he can get that many laps out of it. Of course, the uh, camera getting confused on where he's gone. So that is a Toro Rosso 1-2 at the moment. Cozzy in very, very short succession. We know he's got that penalty. Uh, we know he's got that penalty at the moment. No, I am in the box on my own uh, for the sprint series there. Ah, another Kodiak that's spelled slightly differently. <laughs> welcome to you. And welcome to all those that are in the channel at the moment. You are always welcome uh, for our league races. Cozzy then keeping the pressure on the Toro Rosso at the moment. Makes himself a little bit known, but there's no way he was going to throw it on the inside of turn. Uh, that will be turn 11 from a particular distance. Look how the tails are wiggling away on that Smeej and Skatey that uh, we saw. But they are within pretty good range there. There's Kalon not too far back. There he is in the Red Bull. 
he's struggled a bit in uh, this sprint series. Oh, that's Skatey getting very, very close to Smeach. Coming into that heavy braking zone of turn 12. But remains in his position at the moment. Where is Detainable? There he is. I want to see when he pits. Cosy then keeping Hayden for company. The top three on the Ultra Softs at the moment. There we see uh, Smeach and Skatey just behind them. So a big look at this amount of pressure that is being exerted. Timp and has just demoted Rienk. And there we go. We've got some ultra soft runs coming in. Detain did, did detainable. That's an interesting sentence. Look at that. Four cars in the pits. Two ultra soft runners and two super soft runners. Hayden, Cozzy, Smeege and Skatey all came in. Kane on choose, chose to continue. As I'm not really surprised. He's on the super soft runners. In fact, you do KK is commentating on this race. Dear God, no. <laughs> How crazy are you to want two of me? I the thing is, if that happened, neither of us would get a word in edgeways. <laughs> so Detainable continues to lead this race. He now leads with Kane on by uh, six and a half seconds. But surely Detainable is going to be coming in soon. There is the ever-charging temp on those fresh ultra soft tyres. He obviously feels he can take those to the end of the race. Defabi is in. He's come out in tenth position. Just re Oops, gets himself a penalty there. Where is Detainable? There he is, coming down that long straight, heading down to turn 12. Big heavy braking zone there. Again, probably not a lockup actually going on there. And oh, to other oh, sample of one le actually leaving the session. Cozzy is still pretty close to Hayden, so they put it at the same time. Both coming out predictably on Supersoft, so he started on the Ultras. And because he's still having DRS then on that Mercedes, that is, is that, that's Reink that's just gone through the shot in the Red Bull. Don't believe he's come in yet. And indeed he has not. Where's Detainable? He is, oh no, he is coming out. I thought he was going to go for another lamp on those Ultras. That possibly a little bit like, oh, you saw how the tail did not want to stick then. You only just managed to get that slowed down. Kalon predictably comes in as well. It's going to be interesting to see where they come out in relation to everybody else. So that is going to hand the lead over to the ultra soft shot McLaren of Timp. He has uh, played a pretty good, a pretty good strategy call here. One thirty-four seven as his fastest lap. Then oh, wrong one. Uh, there you go. That shows the overall position changes. Rig has chosen to continue, but he's got a whole lot of company there. He's just lost third. That's Hayden that's flown through, but he's overshot that turn one. He's going to lose that position back to Rian. Cozzy has already gone through into third. There is the Mercedes. Oh, and Hayden had to slip out. Oh, Rian, another penalty. And uh, this track is catching a few people out. As mentioned earlier, I'm not really surprised. Oh, my goodness me. That is Rian that's getting very out of shape. <clears throat> and look at that lovely switch back then by Rian trying to get that fourth position. Can he get it done? He does indeed before the breaking zone on turn 11. And <laughs> Smeege dives through and cuts both of them. What a great move by the Williams. That's actually sent Hayden White. Goodness me. And actually, I think um, Smeech uh, allowed the drivers through. That was uh, sporting of him. That was quite a, uh, a brave move he attempted there. But he has actually allowed people to retake their positions. Very good sportsmanship conduct there. Good on you. But... Uh, He's still fighting though. He's got that's Kale on the, on the uh, fresh ultras, right with him. So jump on board with the Red Bull. You can see Smeed is just determined to get past Hayden. He's trying every which way he possibly can, but that's not really going to help. You've got to pick your time right, not just keep trying every single possible gap you can find. Oh, Smeed has got some terrible lag going on there. Tim really getting the hammer down. One thirty-four seven one four for him. For his fastest lap, then Hayden trying his best to keep these guys behind us. Kalon, oh dear, oh dear. We got another three second penalty for the Red Bull. Now DRS open, but it doesn't seem to be paying off a great deal. Smeech having a look on the inside of turn one. Can he get it done? It's going to be it's gonna be pretty brave, but no, well defended there by Hayden. He was able to keep the momentum going with, <coughs> excuse me, with the Super Softs on that Red Bull. Very, very well played indeed. Let me jump back on with uh, Kalon then. He's uh, skating against himself a penalty. Uh, Kalon's a great camera car for us at the moment for this three way battle. Fourth, fifth, and sixth Hayden, Smeet, and Kalon. Uh, everyone else is fairly well spread out at the moment and uh, still, still seeing the uh, still seeing the penalties clocking in. Hayden, go. 
he went a little deep there at 11 but again that could be out of choice to try and get a uh, greater drive out of the corner Smeet now trying to get the extra pace out of those ultra softs goes towards the inside can he get the job done before the break of zone 12? He did! Oh my goodness me! Kalon throws it on the inside. He's surely not going to make that stick. And indeed doesn't. That was a little bit too ambitious. That actually put Smeed slightly out of kill. So Smeed's now on the outside. Trying to do something about Hayden. Now switches to the inside for that double right hand of 15-16. And Sir Smeed has got it. But can he hold on to it? Hayden now. And Kanon slipped through as well. These three completely swap around position. That put Hayden completely out of position. For 17 18, you saw how slow it was, and there's impact between Hayden and Skatey. Oh, goodness me! And Hayden allowed Skatey through in the house. And Skatey rather a bit out of nowhere there, and uh, caught Hayden completely off guard. Wow, that was uh, pretty intense by these guys. But the battling is by no means done. Kalon all over the back of Smeed still. And oh, Ring oh, Ring's in the pits. I thought he was in trouble there. So the Ultra Soft Shard Red Bull comes in. Let's jump back up to Kalon as he chases that Williams through the S's. You want to be close to someone to try and attack them for the heavy braking zone of 11, but unfortunately you lose that downforce with exactly when you need it through those high-speed bends, 3 all the way through to 10, as Sailing gets himself a penalty as well. Now Kalon, can he press on to try and do something about Smeed coming through the apex of 11? Oh, you heard how the rear just lit up then. They did not want to bite into the tarmac at all. And uh, Kalon's lost a little bit too much ground to try and throw one on the inside. And again, he's going to close in. Oh, my goodness me. And Skatey getting himself a penalty there. That's the, the Haas you see behind these guys. That's what happens when uh, you push a little bit hard. Oh, goodness me. So there's a, a great example of the different lines being used through 15 and 16. You saw Smeed and the Williams go for slower entry, but a wider line to try and get a better exit out of 16. Whereas Kanon tried to take a tighter line through both apexes. He, he caught up with the Williams, but couldn't do anything about it when he got there. Skatey now getting within DRS range of Kanon and Smeed. So we got this, for what was a four card battle, is, is now returning to be a three car battle. So coming to turn one, Kanon looked like he got very deep, but again, look, could look to be getting a. trying to get a decent line, a uh, decent exit from turn one. As Detainable gives himself a penalty, but uh, at that, he's uh, five and a bit seconds ahead of Cozzy, so that's not going to cost him anything at this point in time, unless, of course, he gets another one in the remaining four laps. And there you see Skatey is catching up to the back of this Red Bull. Oh, big old tank slapper for Kane on there. That would be a uh, that would have woke him up a little bit if he wasn't before. On board there with the Haas of Skatey in sixth position. Smeet didn't look like he had a great exit from turn eleven. This could put Kane on right on his case. You can see Smeet looked like he had to go for the inside line very, very early. Kanon is <laughs> picking up as much slipstream as he can. Is he going to throw on the inside? He's gone for the inside. Can he make it stick? Oh, well played by both of them. Smeed still alongside. He's going to have the inside. Four turns, 13, 14. And he's going to return to that position. Kanon's still there. Can he hold on to it? Now for the double left-hander of 15, 16. And Kanon's gone through again. Can he hold on to it? Skatey now getting involved. And again, he's Skatey's going to have to pick his moment. That battle is not done. Oh, great uh, timing for the helicam there. Look at the Williams. He's nailed to the back of the Red Bull. He actually hit the back of the Red Bull. That's, uh, I think Kanan was a little bit slower coming through 19 than Smeej was expecting. And that caught the Williams completely by surprise. Now we're going to see uh, something go on into turn one. Three laps to go here at this uh, first race of Kota. Oh, Timp gets himself a penalty. Well, that's not something you see particularly often. On board. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. On board again with the Haas. Just keep your patience. Hit your marks through the S's. You're not going to be able to do much if you get too close. Through nine. Through eight and nine. Oh, again, a little bit of a tank slapper by Skatey. Smeet will know that the Haas is there. Is he going to throw on the inside of 11? He has a look. He's going to go for it. Can he make it stick, though? That's going to be the... He does. 
Smeez did not have an answer for it. Well played then by the House of Skatey. That is gaining a position as Erskabel gets himself a penalty. But Smeez is straight on the House's case then. Smeez goes to the inside line of the Williams. He's going to have that done at the breaking zone. And Skatey knew that overtake was done. He wisely let him go, but he's nailed to the diffuser of the Williams. And that's going to give Kalon an opportunity. He already is outside of DRS range. You just see the Red Bull go out of the shot. Uh, that's one and a half seconds. Ooh, and a big tank slapper there by the Williams. Look at that. Skatey's nearly pushing Smees through the 17, 18 double right-hander. Now through 19. Down towards the final turn. Tiny bit wide there for Skatey. Surely now again that's that was a was quite a poor line through turn 20 through the final turn for skatey so that's going to give smith a tiny bit of breathing space but skate's got a hell of a lot of more pace than the williams closes in but goes very wide into turn one trying to get a faster line out of it but to be honest i'm not sure how much you're going to gain because you're straight into the s's we are straight into turn two that leads into the s's so having a faster exit from turn one i'm not really too convinced it's going to gain you a great deal Unless, of course, you are banking on a mistake by the guy you are chasing. So, again, Kanon has actually run off into the distance. Two seconds now separates the Williams and the Red Bull. Now heading down to 11. There you see in the background is Hayden. He was uh, fighting in the podium positions early on. Still time to go. There's two laps remaining here. Which, in the sprint series, is plenty enough time for things to change. This is the uh, closest uh, uh, battle we have on track at the moment. Skatey's not going to be close enough to try and move into 12. Look at that. There's the Red Bull of Kalon. He's going to take a mistake from him. We have a problem with Sector 2. We don't know who that was. Oh, it's Defabe. Oh, my goodness me. That's not what you tend to like to see. A Sauber trying to reverse. Or anybody trying to reverse. That is a turn 11. So he's really badly overcooked it on that uh, heavy braking zone. And ended up having to reverse out of the wall. Back to this battle then for fifth position. Oh, goodness me, that's a long way off circuit for the house then. That, again, is going to give Smeet a little bit of breaking, a little bit of breathing space, rather. But again, you just saw the tail did not want to bite on that Williams. And still, Smeet feels the need to defend the inside line. And now we have a problem in sector three. Oh, and that is the Williams. It's gone wide. Is this an opportunity for Skatey? No, not quite. Defabe, I think, is in trouble again. Erzkabel has a 10-second penalty for corner cutting. That's... I suspect there's been a problem down there. We saw the yellow flags. Uh, I think Defabe may have been involved in that. We don't entirely know. Let's jump back up to this uh, battle. Oh, that's going to be wide. Another penalty for Hayden. That's not going to help him at all. Let's just double check where Timp is. He's on the back straight, so uh, he's still got a little way to go yet. Apologies for the uh, jumping around of the cameras, but it uh, just enables me to keep up with, uh, keep tabs on where everybody is. That's turn 11. They've just gone through. This is going to be Skatey's last opportunity then to try and do something about the Williams. Save for a mistake, but I think Tim is going to be crossing the line any minute. Oh, no, not quite. We've got a few more seconds before he does. Back, oh, that was a good back shot there from Smeet. Oh, the warehouse is having a look, but there's no room there. As Smeet's just managed to keep the door closed enough to keep Skatey behind. Oh, Skatey's still having a think about it. But your winner for this round number nine here at Kota for the first sprint race is the McLaren. He's got time to go over the line backwards. It is the McLaren of Timp. Detainable uh, pole man. Uh, sorry, Timp was the pole man but uh, leading the race for quite a while was detainable. Cosi in the uh, Mercedes. A great result for him. He'll be quite happy with that. And there it's Kalon. That'll uh, do his uh, championship battle. Oh, that's a way to uh, finish a race. Yeah, nice one, Cosi. Kalon actually got demoted through penalties and Smeech <laughs> bounces off two walls. <laughs> And uh, destroys the front uh, of that car. But he's been elevated to fourth then. Came on with penalties. He's demoted to five. Skatey was sixth. We had Hayden there. He's just crunched into the back of someone in seventh. There's Salenk in the uh, Force India. Really didn't get to see you uh, very much at all. Coldo, we saw, uh, was uh, caught up in that early... <coughs> the uh, early misadventures on the line. So he comes across the line in ninth. There is Tefabe. Someone actually sat still. That'll be the three-wheeled three -wheeled Merc, I suspect. Erskabel comes across the line in the 11th. And Rienk, a race to forget for him in the Red Bull. Across the line, and that will complete the lineup. We've lost uh, Rick Vega right at the beginning and Tebula 1 as the race went on. 
Right. Maybe we'll just wait for the final positions to come up. We, of course, have the uh, podium celebrations in the normal fashion. <coughs> and there they are. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. Just grabbing a drink there. Once again, Tim. Getting that toss ball. Oh, I know what I can do at this point. Let's get uh, that running again. Once again, the finish flag on the top spot. As I uh, get forward through. So, Tim then taking the win. Look, at every single driver had at least one penalty. Every single one of them. That uh, that's, uh, tells you how difficult this track is. But Tim 1, Detainable 2, Cosy 3, Smeed 4, Kalon 5, Skatey 6, Hayden 7, Sailing Sa 8, Calder 9, and Ifabe rounds out your top 10s. The grid will be reformed then for race number two. Do bear with us whilst we do so. We'll be back with you as soon as we can. <clears throat> Let's get the ever-growing fame of the Cannibal Run going once again. Indeed. Do love that track, even though I play it so many times every single week. Still love it, still love it. We are waiting for a couple of our drivers to return to the session, and we will get this underway for you. So do bear with us. We will get the second race here at Circuit of the Americas underway as soon as we can for you. But, uh, wow, a lot of people have got to... Uh, 
I say a lot of people, every single person had at least one penalty there, so that's going to keep us commentators busy. It's certainly going to keep those calculated. If, if any of those um, penalties are going to be contested post race, it's going to uh, keep the stewards very, very busy, I suspect. So, indeed, we are just waiting for drivers to return to session. So, for those unfamiliar with uh, the format of this particular series, it is two 25% races, <clears throat> both held on the same circuit that the main uh, series the following day is going to be run on. So the, the main f uh, league races go on tomorrow. Uh, again, the streams will be held here at the Apex Online Racing YouTube channel, for which I will be covering the uh, PC Split 1, along with my ever-faithful counterpart, Mr. Hamish Sopwith. So we are just, uh, like I said, we're just waiting for a couple of drivers to return to us. So that from th from the qualifying that we had at the at the beginning of the session, the top eight are going to be reversed, and ninth downwards will remain in their original qualifying positions. And we will then get <coughs> race number two underway. So there won't be a second qualifying session. Oh, excuse me. Uh, that's, we will just go straight into once the grid has been built. As we're still missing a couple of our drivers. Uh, once we have, uh, once we get the countdown going, I will put the stream back on. Otherwise, you're just seeing a lobby. Uh, well, I suppose a lobby is a little bit more interesting than uh, a blank screen, I grant you. So yes, that's basically what we're waiting for. Is uh, Rick Vega and Table of One are the two drivers that were with us in race one, but uh, did not uh, <coughs> uh, manage to make the end of the race. We are waiting for those to return, if at all possible. So yes, so now it's the second round. Again, 25% with the top eight reversed, as previously mentioned. So no other qualifiers. And it looks like we are getting this round underway then. We will be short of Rick Vega and Temple of One, it would seem. Well, they have 20 seconds to get in. <laughs> I would think, by the look of that, that they are going to be out of this second round then. And the rest is exactly as we've had it. So, yes, with the action we had in the first round. If we get some uh, wet weather in there, that'll be uh, even more interesting. And down to the grid we go. 13 drivers in, so we lost two, gained one. AOR Smash has joined us for the second round. There you see his name at the bottom of the driver list. <coughs> Let's get on then with round 10 of the championship. Second round here at Kota. Let us see what the weather is going to give us. Just waiting for AOR Smash. There he is. Down we go. We know that bit. It's overcast but dry this time around. Which I'm sure the drivers will be quite pleased about. Wet weather here at Kota is a very, as we say, well, we saw it in qualifying just in the one lap that they did. But uh, with the amount of uh, twisty bits and technicality of this track, the wet weather conditions will make for absolute. Um, Big old headaches and a lot of problems, I suspect. Come on, let's go, let's go. I love that. Uh, that I love the love the American accent on the uh, announcer there in the background. Right, come on then. Here we go. Five seconds and we go down to the grid. Ready or not, here we come. Here we go. It's uh, sailing on the pole. Then five lights. Wind them up and let them wait for it and go then you saw a pretty decent start there by skating in the house there oh look at the mercedes that is cosy i think that's trying to come through smeed has gained one Timp has gained one those <laughs> position swaps all over the place the force india hanging on to that oh my goodness me look at that canelon up to third then what a ah, wrong way oh, i'm gonna make he's all wrong for some reason it's not like i haven't done this before smeed's then third canelon four Senek hands on Hangs on to the lead at the moment. We've got two in the pit. Oh, that was Rick Vega and Temple of One. It looks like they weren't able to join us in time. There they are. Look, oh, what a great shame. They didn't quite rejoin in time. Uh, or because they were in the uh, in the round to start with, they weren't able to return to us. Look at that. Temp is up to fifth already in the McLaren. And it uh, looks like Cozzy's lost a couple. Let's uh, change the detail to position change. Look at that. Skatey's lost three. Temp up three. Smeej up two. 
And Cosi and Jatane were both down one apiece then. And that is the Mercedes. That is Cosi, you see. Oh, my goodness me. That's Cosi getting very, very close to Skatey then coming into turn 11. Oh, I need to change a window. Sorry about that. Oh, forever doing that. So Skatey keeping that uh, Mercedes at bay. Oh, bit of a lag moment there for Cosi. Let's jump back up to the front. As, uh, actually, no, let's not jump to the front as Kalon is... Uh, Kanon's having a battle over four. That's Tippy side by side with. <laughs> Around the outside. And ooh, that could be nasty. And that's a Red Bull flying off the road. That is Kalon. I saw him get very out of shape coming through. Well, 16 through to 19. Sailing then, of course, coming across the line first. And Kanon's lost a position to Skatey as well. He's down to sixth then in a half a dozen corners. He's already then under pressure by Cosi in the Mercedes. And Kanon again, he went for a very wide line and that cost him the position to Cosi. If he was going for a quicker exit, it did not pay off. Temp now up to fourth in the McLaren. It looks like everybody's running the super soft tyres. Uh, oh, come on. There we go. Oh, not everybody. Uh, Sony decided to start in the ultra soft, so that's good, but already has got himself a penalty. So Tim then, a winner from the last round, the championship leader, now up to fourth position, trying to keep the pressure on Smeege. That's detailable. And Kanon again, he is falling through the order. Has he got damage on that Red Bull? Can't, well, certainly can't see from that angle. Front wing. Oh, goodness me, that's... Who was that? That was all out of... Was it a... I wonder if that was Smash that was uh, all out of sync. Oh, look at that. That's three white coming into 12. Goodness me, someone's going to lose out. It is Kanon again. He has now fallen down to ninth place. It is getting even worse then for the Red Bull. Oh, look at that. A big chunk of front wing missing. That's why he's so slow. And you do not want to be losing front wing elements here. Tim now up to third. He's already taken the position away from Smeed. He's got Hayden and Sailing ahead of him. You just seen him go through the shot. Oh, big tank slapper for Tim there. I thought, surely he's not coming to the bit already. And Smeed capitalizing on that mistake. DRS is now enabled, and, well, there you go. Smee's handed that position back to the McLaren. <coughs> There's a statement we don't often hear. Oh, look at that. A dive on the inside of turn one for the Williams, but he can't make it stick. Timp getting a great drive on the exit of turn one. Kalon predictably in the pits to get that front nose. Uh, front nose? I don't know how many other noses he has. That front wing changed. Hayden getting a penalty. That's going to hurt from uh, second place. Further back then, Skatey has got Cosi for company still. And then further back again, you've got Caldo in the second. McLaren with detainable all, all over his tail. And just behind him is Defabe. So lots of battling going on at this stage of the race. Look at that train that's going on here behind... I was going to say behind Tim, it's a little bit unfair. It's more like he's behind Smeed. Skatey looks like he's trying to, trying to size up a move. Both of them are going to have DRS. Oh, there's a, again a lag moment there by Cosi in the Mercedes. Oh, is that a move by Skatey in the house? No, not quite. Looked like he was closing in quite heavily on Smeech, but uh, was not close enough to make a move. Oh, problem in Sector 2. Who's falling through the field? It's... No, not Skatey. That was a, a hell of a dive there cut by... Oh, Cosi! Well, I think overcooked it. Uh, trying to go into... It. Cosi's lagging everywhere at the moment. We saw that move but couldn't make it stick then, so that's going to cost Cosi quite a bit of time. He's out of DRS range now of the house, so Skatey can now concentrate on Smeed ahead. As these three cars are... Actually, Timp is in DRS range of Hayden. As you can see, the McLaren's been reading in the top two. And a Smash getting the fastest lap of the foot in the Ultra Soft Shot Force India down there in 10th. He's starting to get into a rhythm. Fair play to you. As uh, these guys now coming through the S's. Ooh, that's... Oh, that's brave! Oh, my goodness me, that was brave. Hayden got very out of shape, and Tim just threw it on the inside. That's uh, so around to seven and eight. And he was very trusting that Hayden wouldn't turn into him, and indeed he didn't. Very, very close, but wow, that was well done by both of them. Cosi and Skatey swung position again. As uh, Defabi and Smash have swapped place as well, down there in ninth. And we didn't see what happened here with Kazi. Oh, problem in sector two, is it? It's Defabi. And again, we have a reversing Zauber. 
So that's a proper turn 11 again. We saw that before. And Skatey's lost another position. There it is. It's Coldo in the McLaren. Th threw it on the inside of 12. And again, the house came for an outside maneuver through 13, 14. And he got run out of rope fair and square by Coldo. He's now going to have detainable on his tail. As Skatey gets himself a penalty. Oh dear, oh dear. Timp has got a couple of seconds to close down to Salink. And the problem is sector three. Who's going to follow the field? Is Erskable. Another reversing car. That's Williams of Erskable. Where is that? And he's actually recovered it to track. I'm not surprised he got himself all that of a... Uh, out of Kelter, that is turn 16. I think he's got the double right hand of 17 of 18. Skatey's in the pits then. That's quite early for those super softs, so damage perhaps on the house. We don't know. He's going to have a front wing change. Nope, just a tire change. That's very early. Maybe he uh, was fed up fighting those around him. Off he goes then. And we have a few other pitters, but the ultra soft tires, I would imagine are going to pit her well they should pit early of course they're very 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 soft tyres and in the heat they won't last long and in that very technical track such as this oh cold though that's not going to help you the tyres are going to burn out uh, that little bit quicker so i'm not surprised to see the ultra soft runners come in i am surprised to see super soft runners come in quite this early we are looking at a potential lead change very very soon Sailing, defended that inside line, coming down to turn 12. Is Tim going to try and send it around the outside? He's all well defended again by the Force India. On board then by the McLaren. Double right-hander of 13-14, up to 15. He's going to try and throw it on the inside. It's bold, it's beautiful, and it's not quite done, though. Well played by Sailing. Got a decent drive out of turn 16 that mate he held on to the lead but it does look like it's a fairly inevitable move oh again well defended by Sandlick he's going to come in the pits though fair enough and Tim probably knew that he was going to come in around that kind of point but didn't want to risk just hanging back and waiting for that inevitable pit stop Hayden is pretty close behind there he is just outside of DRS range you can close down a little bit Smeed just come in the pits as well if Hayden can close in that little bit on Tim, then that could well be a battle reigniting for the lead. The Chainable and Caldo are fairly close close together in fifth position, uh, fourth and fifth respectively. There you see that's Cosy in the Mercedes coming through the S's, and that is Smash that's uh, just gone through the shot as well. So again, on board with the Toro Rosso. It's ultra soft shot McLaren, you can imagine, is going to come in soon. And the super soft shot detainable, I wouldn't imagine would. I wonder if Coldo's left that a little bit too long to get rid of those ultra soft. And then, as you can see on the overlay, a lot of people still running. The Oh, Escobar couldn't slow it down quick enough. We've got a pit lane speeding penalty. Not going to help him at all. Look at Kalon down there, 16 seconds down in 12th position. And Defabi and Smeed have swapped position. That's a turn 11. The Williams getting the inside maneuver done on the Sauber clean and fair so he's now got three and a half seconds you can see Sailing former race leader just ahead of him let's bring up the stops amount there you go a lot of people are yet to change tyres it's, it's not even a mi it's not even all the ultras all the super softs have yet to pit it's a very big mixture that's very interesting I did not expect to see such a varied range as Tim gets 35.9 as oh, the fastest lap at the moment as we are fast approaching the halfway stage, now we see four people of the top six in. Smash, Coldo, Cozzy and Hayden have all come in. So Detainable and Timp have chosen to continue. Timp now leads Detainable by seven seconds. But uh, whoa, that was Smeed getting very, very lively on the exit of the final turn, turn 20. And who's that? that, who's that? That's Hayden who's just come out of the pit in fourth. So it's the least meat has got uh, someone to play with there. Is that Skatey in trouble or Skatey losing position? I think that's Skatey losing position to Coldo at turn one. Oh, he's staying very, very close as Cozzy in the Mercedes gets himself a penalty. We've seen Cozzy with a fair bit of lag trouble. In the second race, Skatey got very out of shape on that next apex. That's going to lose him some time to Coldo. Smash gets a penalty as well. The penalty's still coming in thick and fast, unfortunately. Skatey keeping the pressure on that McLaren at the moment. 
There's a four turns separating. So now it's going to be a great opportunity. You want to get a decent exit out of 11. He's got the softer rubber. But how much life has he got? Now the DRS is open. Gaining, gaining, gaining. Calder goes defensive. He's going to have to either switch back or throw around the outside. He's gone for the switch back, up and switch back option, but that puts him on the outside again. Good defending there by the McLaren. Haas has kept his foot in it. He's now going to have the inside of the next two apexes. Can he do it? Yes, he can. But can he make it stick? The McLaren's still there. Coldo hanging on for everything he's possibly got. Coldo's now going to have the inside of the next two apexes. It's a very long camera angle. And he's actually kept the car ahead. It's detainable now from second position comes in. And the Haas is going to have to do that all over again. That was brilliantly played by Coldo. And we have a problem in sector two. We don't know who that is. Detainable's in the pits. We already know that. Smeed getting the fastest out. Rienk getting another penalty. Oh, that is a detainable coming out right in front of this battle. Coldo trying the inside. At, uh, sorry, Skatey trying the inside of turn one. Sc Cold Scaldo? Coldo trying to keep hold of it and does manage to through turn two. Goodness me, Coldo's heart must be in his mouth at the moment. Absolutely great stuff. Now, I, it's unlikely the detainer was going to become part of this particular battle. He's on fresh ultra soft tyres as Skatey gets himself a penalty again. Smeed is getting close to Hayden, though. This is a battle for third. And Sailenk through the pit stops. He's not actually too far off of Tim, but uh, Tim has got very fresh tyres on his car. But that Force India does have DRS, so <laughs> Tim can't completely ignore the car behind. And the top four, actually the top five, are not too far apart car to car, so there's a potential uh, train forming here that uh, we could see play out before the race is done. All of them on ultras except for Sainink in that, uh, actually in the top six. It's Coldo, as we've seen, we've seen him fighting off Skatey. He's still got the harder rubber on. Skatey is not letting that McLaren go at all. Now you can see Detainable ahead of them, but uh, like I say, he's got the fresh tyres on. He's not going to, he's not likely to fall, unless he makes a mistake, of course. He's not likely to fall into the clutches of this battle. So Katie get a big tank, Skatey get a big tank slapper on. Uh, coming out of turn 19. Can he do anything into turn 1? It's going to be very, very dive, big dive bomb if he tries it. And wisely he does not. Both of them following a near identical... Oh, Tim! Oh, that could cost you. That could cost you. That would... If the race finished now, it would cost him the lead. As Caldo... Oh, Caldo again gets himself a penalty. So we are going to have to wait until the race is done before we know where anybody is finished. As Kanon comes into the pits again... So his race is getting ever worse. I wonder if the ultra softs on that Haas are burnt out because Coldo doesn't look like he's under quite as much pressure as he has been leading up to this point. I'm assuming they've been through the pits once. Yep, everybody has been through the what's so <laughs> been through the pits once. A couple of people have been through it twice. Skatey will of course close in a bit. Ooh, strange lag moment there. Ooh, Sainik has just lost second. Oh, okay, that's not a common place you see overtaking going on. Oh, well, we have seen it already in this race. Oh, my goodness, I mean, Sainik trying his best to defend against Hayden. But so with the super ultra softs on that car, it's going to be near impossible. We have got a train of us. Rink, another person on the penalty board. Oh, that's me trying to get past Smeet. It's Oh, <laughs> Smeet. I was going to say Smeet is looks like he's very, very impatient in certain points. And it is causing him problems. He's flying off the road everywhere. That's going to be an opportunity for Cosy. I would imagine to do something against the Williams. Uh, that lag is causing them to bounce around everywhere. He's going to throw on the inside of one, but can he make it stick? Can he get the traction when he needs it? The Williams is still there. Can he get it done before two? No, the Williams just manages to hold on. And Cozzy returns back into that position. And Skatey has managed to finally, at turn one, get past Coldo. That has been a long time coming, but. It all depends on how long those tyres last for. Back up to this position. This is second, third, fourth and fifth in very, very short succession. Now it's Hayden, Sealink, Smeej and Cozzy. Look at that lovely big train forming here. Five laps to go. There you see Detainable in the background. Heading on down to 12. You see up ahead that is... That is race leader Timp, but he's... Quite a way ahead now is uh, that one penalty he's picked up is not going to be 
too costly for him at this point. I had a funny feeling that would be the case. Coldo is staying with me, so just cut to Coldo in times he's trying to move on the inside of 12. And then a switchback! Wow, now that I didn't expect, and I'm not entirely sure Skatey did either, but unfortunately was not able to get the traction he needed. He's now going to try the wide line through 15-16. And again, a tank slapper by the Haas, but Coldo could not capitalise on it. What a brave move then by Coldo. He's not letting that uh, go at all. Now coming down towards 19. Nearly clean by both of them. Heading towards final turn. And again, the tail's just not wanting to bite. And that is going to give Skatey enough breathing space, I think. And that is... Who was that? I think that... Who was that that just came out? Was that Erskabel that just came out of the pit? It was indeed. So Erskabel's a lap down and slowing. Okay, not too sure. Erskabel having a problem there. He's a lap... Oh, he's, I think he may have been waiting for others. Look at that. Skatey trying now to get away from that McLaren, but... I wonder whether Skatey's already burned the best out of those tyres, and that's the super soft shot McLaren. He's now going to start to come good and could possibly get that seventh position back. Let's not uh, take away from this particular battle either. If that's holding true for these guys, Salient could now start to get away from Smeej and Cosy behind, although the Williams and the Mercedes do look like they're ready to pounce. Smeej going with the inside of 12. And the Force India trying to hang on to that inside line. Impact between the two. Oh, goodness me. Cosy now getting interested in the big tank slapper for the Force India right in the middle of that particular battle. Wow, look at that. The Force India threw that on the inside of turn 16. But can he make it stick? That camera angle is too long. No, he can't. Smeet has managed to regain third. And Cosy's right in there as well. Goodness me. And look at that, uh, Cozzy now having a look at the inside of the final turn, can't quite get it done. And Calder and Skatey are still fighting as well, it's difficult to know where to look, both of <laughs> them flying off the road. <coughs> and Salink has lost that, oh blimey, that was a weird moment there, but Salink has lost that fourth position to the Mercedes. Did have a feeling he might do, oh my goodness me, it's a smeech. A smeech, he's overcooked it on the exit of turn one, and he's lost two as a result of it. That's detainable has gone through. Smeech, uh, sorry, Katie and I keep saying Katie. Skatey and Coldo are still having their battle as well. They were side by side on the exit of one. Goodness me, is it possible to know whether Lucas Coldo jumps across one of the apexes? Smeech has got it all to do. He just picked himself up another penalty. He's now got to chase down to Chaney. He lost three positions down to one mistake. And exactly as I said before, one mistake is going to be very, very costly here. Sayonek is still hanging on to, he's still within DRS range of the Mercedes. So he's not out of the running yet. He could well challenge for that podium position. Detainable has got that uh, Williams all over his tail. Kanon in the pits yet again. He may as well just not bother coming back out, unfortunately. But uh, another pit stop for the Red Bull. This will be one that uh, be knocked down to experience for him as Rienk. Another penalty on the board. Oh, goodness me. So, Tim comes around. He leads by eight seconds from Hayden then as Tim starts the penultimate lap. Hayden leads 2.2 over Cozzy, who's got who leads a four-car train. Oh, to be fair, it's two pairs. Oh, you saw Smeed getting all out of shape there. So, Cozzy 3, Sailing 4, Detainable 5, Smeed 6 in a pretty short succession. As the other Williams of Erskable gets another penalty on the board. He's already in last all the same. It can't get any worse for him. Skatey is six seconds down from that particular battle. Oh, Caldo getting very, very out of shape in the McLaren. That's going to... That could potentially cost him DRS when they uh, come around again. He's just within... Oh, Sailing, what a shame that you just picked up a penalty now. That is going to be quite costly for you, sir. Smash. Saw a fair bit of him early on, but haven't seen a great deal of him since. Way And uh, get a bit of running and going on there. Defabe, barely seen you at all. And just as I cut to you, get another penalty for the Sauber. Rienk in the Red Bull has gone... A little bit out of shape by the sound of the tyres into turn one. Kalon has been through the pits more times than he would care to count. And Escobar there 
has been really struggling in that Williams. Let's jump back up to this four car train here. Three, four, five and six. It is getting very, very intense as the race starts to draw to a close. As it starts to draw to a close, it continues to draw to a close, I should say. Selig is just about, has just about lost DRS on the Mercedes. You've just seen Cosi go through the shot. Hayden picks up a penalty. And that's, oops, that's me flying off the road again. That could be costly for Hayden. As Hayden does not leave by three seconds. That's down on the nose of Detainable and Selig trying to defend. And... Let's see how turn one plays out. Detainable's nose ahead. Can he hold on to it? No, the 14 is still there. But uh, Sainik can't hang on to Detainable. Or can he? Oh, me of little faith. The Force India does. He manages to keep Detainable behind. That's because he's just going to have a penalty. And there was a problem in sector three. We don't know who. That could be costly for Cozzy as well. He could lose that third position to Sainik. But again, it does depend on penalties across the board. As Rian gets himself a penalty as well. Just check on where Tim is. He's on the back straight. Oh, that's detainable again. Have a look at the inside of turn 12. Of turn 11, rather. On the Force India. Can I get it done? Bit of wheel banging going on between the two. Side, <coughs> side by side now on that back straight. Oh, that's Erskable gone. We've lost Erskable from this race. And the uh, still detainable is alongside and sorely not Smeech oh goodness me Smeech tried to claim both of them but he's lost out slightly big tank slapper for the Williams is not going to try the inside of the next apex goodness me through 13 14 can he get the tractor when he needs it not quite well defended by Sony <laughs> and the switchback I can't call it quick enough Sony's flown off the road Smeech is now up to fifth I it was impossible for me to keep up with all the action but let's jump up to the top lane because I think by now it has indeed Timp is the winner of uh, this next round. That's four in a row for the McLaren. Hayden is going to cross the line, keeping Cozzy behind him just about. Cozzy comes across the line in third, but demoted to fourth. Hayden elevated to that uh, podium position. Smeet, bang, there was a bit of carbon fiber there. Smeet hangs on to that fifth position. Sainik is down in sixth then. Smash seventh. Caldo eight. Caldo did indeed beat Skatey towards the end. We didn't see... I wasn't able to catch back up with that particular battle. Defabe crosses the line. Oh, it's going to cross the line and taking the remaining point. Remaining championship point. Force Alba. Rienk in the Red Bull. Coming through. 17-18. And it's going to finish very lonely. He's already ghosted. Kadam. Kadam's actually retired. And fair enough, he was the last running car. He's run out, He's taken a uh, break board with him. Yet again, bits of front wing missing. Oh my goodness me. It could not have got much worse for Kalon. And that is it. We are done here for the Sprint Series at Circuit of the Americas. <coughs> goodness me. That was incredible. The amount of stuff going on. It was impossible for me to keep up with it. There it is. Once again, the uh, finish lag on the top spot. And surrounded by Red Bull this time. And at your final confirmation of well, technically Red Bull, they were Toro Rossi, you know what I mean. Everybody but detainable this time uh, with a penalty. Tim 1, detainable 2, Hayden 3, Cosi 4, Smeege 5, Sainik 6, Smash 7, Calder 8, Skatey 9, and Defabe IR Top 10. Thank you very much for those that have been with us from beginning to end. It's always a great pleasure to have you along. If you wanted to get involved in uh, what we do here at Apex Online Racing, head over to apexonlineracing.com. Look at the forums, get involved. You may have crazy bears like me shouting your on track antics. But for now, thank you very much. I will see you back here for more AOR action, which will be tomorrow for the main league races. Thank you very much, and good night.